I wish I could have showed y'all. <laughs> it's not even funny, y'all. It's some, it, it's some a family out here across the street over there where my mom is at. Um, her and her sisters and brothers. And my grandmother is somewhere over here. I haven't yet to found, find her. She was the first one out here um, that passed during that time. Whatever, my grandfather is right there. And my sister, my nephew right there. My other nephew over there. Um, and it's weird because these people have the same. When I, when I first stepped out last week, when um, I got that message from the lady on YouTube, uh, um, she's an ancestor reader. Or whatever she gives messages from our ancestors and it was you know to do with my son or whatever she was like I think I already told y'all this story already before but I'm kind of kind of like trying to tell y'all again because it puzzled me because I've been trying to put pieces together I haven't been over here the last time I was over here I was over there with my nephew over there um, Jones, I was over there with him because, um, and all of us have different last names and stuff because, you know, some, you know, my sister, she was married and, um, her kids or whatever, they were named after their fathers and stuff. So, or whatever. Um, anyway, so, um, um, Nevertheless, uh, it was so weird because these people name over here was like absolutely like exactly these people passed away together. Um, Um, they passed away together, this couple, and their name is Robert and Rosie, which is the same name as my grandparents. It tripped me out. And so, y'all, I was digging more, digging some more into it or whatever. And, um, I was digging more into it, and I was trying to figure out about this mason stuff because i wanted answers and i wanted to know what was going on with um with uh my family and the generational thing so for years i've been digging into stuff or whatever trying to find out and figure out what the deal was you know to do with and what, you know, where some of these um, generational curses and things that have been casted and placed upon. But um, my, it's like my grandparents or whatever been tugging me, but the ancestral reader, she was like stating that, mm, she, you know, how I knew that it was possibly true because She's like, the last time I was out here, I bawled my eyes out and I was so depressed with my nephew, the one that got shot and killed. He was trying to get his uh, girlfriend in the car. And what was so weird about it, two weeks before that, he had just told me that he was going to quit going out to the club. Well, he went out again. And nevertheless, that was the last time we, you know, he was going to be alive and something I think must have been telling him to not go out anymore because two weeks before that he called and gave me a report about you know because he had been doing a lot of overtime and working a lot for the state and he was liking it and he was getting his car and he was just about to get it painted and 
he was traveling, you know, on his off days and, you know, he would work a lot and then request to be off and he was just going out of town and he was shopping a lot and different things like that. He was 23 years old. He was getting ready to start to college on, um, it was the next month on the 3rd or whatever. And so it was like, it was a trip. It was a trip because um, he had just told me he wasn't going to go out anymore and so forth. And he did or whatever. And he was trying to get his girlfriend in the car. And um they shot him twice. They was it was a blood and a crip it was blood and crips gang shootout at the club that had been going on for weeks. My other nephew, which is in boxing, he had been in it. And it was crazy because they all used to hang around with both, but they were more or less, you know, just really trying to stay focused and just used to be hustled, like hustling, like they were hustlers or whatever. They wasn't, you know, they was, you know, they wasn't just into like, I'm fixed to go and, you know, we fixed to go bring the heat to the Crips or we gonna go bring the heat to the Bloods or anything. They really wasn't on no side like that. Like we lived on the West side, but Nevertheless, or whatever, like Bloods and Crips used to always be around us and our families and how we grew up or whatever. So we really wasn't, you know, having beef with gang members like that. We was cool, you know, um, and they were all cool with us because we used to all be trying to make make a dollar together, trying to, you know, trying to do something. <laughs> So we were just out in, you know, and they were younger than I was. So or whatever, like 12 years or so younger than I was. So it was just, and my, one of my nephews, which is a boxer and he's really, really short. He's like a little bit taller than what I am. And when I tell you it was all sizes, all tall guys all kinds you know he would not and even when he did get into it like that like all of them was trying to fight him from east side blood or whatever which like i'm telling y'all we dealt with you know people like that it wasn't just having beef with you know with you no know, with any gang members here or whatever so my nephew he got into it with them and was fighting or whatever, but he would fight. He wasn't about trying to, my nephew that could box, he was a boxer. He wasn't trying to, you know, get no gun and kill none of them or anything like that. And they shot him in his head. He's still alive right now. I'd be wanting to go and, you know, so my sister to see if my sister will let me put him on here or whatever, because I told her to do it. And I don't know if she did or not because my family is so screwed, like, you know, like, during the years, because we haven't been, no one, like, no one's been as close as we should be, or whatever, whatnot, or whatever, um, we never, um, like, I don't want her thinking I'm trying to get some type of, recognition or anything like that you know by just putting my nephew on here but he got shot in his head and like it basically he was only and he was in his late 20s he was in his 20s it sent him into a vegetable like but he's getting along now but he had to relearn how to walk talk everything but he was a boxer he was a boxer he wasn't he wasn't, um, my nephew, he wasn't into like, I'm going to get my gun and I'm going to do this. He was a boxer and he wasn't very tall and he really could fight really, really, really good. And so it's just so ironic and weird or whatever, like how all of this stuff have occurred, you know, 
on both sides of my family is to do with my father and his family members and also my mom or whatever and then like us not really ever really having a major connection with our parents or whatever you know so we have to make up in the mind in our mind that we want to change we have to break we have to come out of these old paradigms ways of thinking to do with all of that to do with religion and all of that because you never know where god is going to send you into to speak or to tell someone something that could help them or to even just go and tell someone so y'all um like i say i've been trying to get all of this together but the ancestral reader she was saying your family your ancestors is fighting for you in the spiritual realm and you got a lot of loved ones that are deceased and they're fighting for you as well in the spiritual realm they know what these people are doing and have done to you or whatever and she was like but they um they're sad and they want you they said you haven't went to see them in a long time and it was true because i only was going to see my mom over there across the street and her brothers and sisters and stuff is over there i usually go over there and i'll put flowers and things like that but you know like digging more further into the masons and things like that as well and i will be coming back to kind of help you guys on that level if you've been dealing with any of the same situations you know and maybe you know that'll give you some insight on where to go what you need to do and you know why things are occurring or have occurred in your life or whatever so yeah i just you know i got people that's just you know if you're gonna be a hater and you're unhealed just keep your opinion to yourself or whatever it you know like i say a lot of my videos is not just for everybody your situation may not even be so why you know that means you need to go to another channel you know your situation may not even be dealing with these deep hard issues and situations that we're dealing with you know and the reason for why we been attracting these curses attracting these demonic forces or whatever that is not meaning us any good in these people that we're being attracted to or whatever or why we're attracting them to us or whatever or why they're even being attracted to us or whatever because of emptiness or whatever you know you got to have you got to have um you have to love yourself you have to love, love yourself to the fullest we can't just say it you got to do it when someone's disrespecting you, not appreciating you, treating you wrong, misusing you, abusing you, cut them off. It ain't, it, it ain't nothing to cut that B off. It ain't nothing to cut that B off or whatever. So, you know, you just have to know or whatever. Loving yourself, thyself. You know, it's so many, it's so many selfish people. You got people out here. That's what happens with these men as well. Okay, you can jump however you want to and skip and hop and move on to different partners, however, but still have a level of respect enough to love yourself enough to love your children and put out the same amount of love that you are giving yourself to your kids, regardless of what connection you are in. And if you are with the right person, they're going to love your children as well and treat your children just like they treat their own. So, you know, this stuff is deep. This I, I, I keep trying to tell people that it's not just no piece of cake. Like people, they're thinking, oh, this is just a piece of cake. Me and I'm, I'm up in this room trying to see where my masculine is at. And when we're coming together and what his karmic is doing and why the karmic is doing all of this. No, that's not the matter of the fact. We got to fix us first, okay? And it, it, there's no telling how long. Some of us, it may take a little work. Some of us, some of us, it's going to take a lot of work because, 
you went through a lot and you each time you know you just was bumping yourself back further and further and further dealing with these different situations with multiple partners and a lack of love loving yourself okay so we're just trying to um hammer the nail to the wall and get this stuff together so we could be one accord with self and come into that spiritual union first with God and then come into union you know with the divine partner that God feel that we should be with not these people that we're attracting that it wasn't even really supposed to be in our lives but they are lifelong lessons because we were attracting them on a low vibration and they were there to teach us something like uh, I don't want that ever again so that's what we're doing it's not a big deal it is a big deal but then it isn't but that's if you are here to do the work it's not just about you and a lot of times people they're narcissistic and or they're dealing with a lack of self-love or whatever to the point to where they feel I know this thing is about me I'm codependent you know I be projecting rejecting doing all sorts of stuff and I just want my partner or whatever it's nothing to do with uh no work I don't want to do no work I just want to be with my partner because we're going to come together and we're going to be in love and go live happy ever after no ma'am that's not what this divine spiritual twin flame journey is about it's about you most of all and healing yourself and loving yourself the mostest okay so i'll be back later with some more god bless y'all y'all have a great day